What are the intercepts of the function f of x equals x plus 3 multiplied by 4x squared minus 1? All right, so first thing is we have to understand what do they mean by intercepts. We have two types. We have x-intercepts and we have y-intercepts. If we look at a graph, right, and pretend the function looks like this, I have no idea if this is what it actually looks like, okay? Actually, I, I do know it doesn't look like this, actually, but just, just pretend uh, this is the function we're dealing with, okay? Um, the x-intercepts now are going to be the values of x, we could also think about it as the coordinates, where the function intersects the x-axis. Remember, the x-axis is the vertical, uh, horizontal axis. Whoops, trying to confuse you, I guess. The y-axis is going to be the vertical, all right? So we, it turns out that we do know something unique about both of these um, x-intercepts. We don't know the x value at the moment, right? I mean, it just it just by looking at it, who knows? It's negative something. I don't know what it is. But you do know the y value of that x-intercept there. You know it's going to be zero. Same thing about this one. I don't know what the x value is. I do know it will be positive, so I'll just write a question mark there. Uh, but I do, And I also know definitively that the y value is going to be zero. So if you notice, whenever you're dealing with x coordinate, uh, x intercepts, you'll always know the y value, and the y value will always equal zero. All right, y will always equal zero. Now, if we take a look at then the uh, y intercept, there's only going to be one here. If you're dealing with a function, there should only be one y intercept. That's it. Period. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a function. All right, it wouldn't press the vertical line test. If that sounds unfamiliar, check out our functions playlist. We have hundreds of problems there. Now. For the uh, y-intercept, we do know also something unique about the y-intercept. When I look at this particular picture, right, all I know is that the y-intercept, the y-value of the y-intercept will be some negative number because it lies below the x-axis, right? It's in the negative y territory. But I do not know, uh, excuse me, but I do know the x-value of that y-intercept, right? I do know that that x-value should be zero, and the y-value is going to be some negative number in this case, right? Uh, based off of my blue uh, function. So keep that in mind. Uh, whenever you're dealing with the y-intercept, you'll always know the x-coordinate. Whenever you're dealing with the x-intercept, you'll always know the y-value. All right? Now, let's start by... We, we need to know that first to kind of understand what I'm going to do here. So let's first look at um, finding our y-intercept. It doesn't matter what you do first. But remember, for your y-intercept, you will always know that x will equal 0 for the reasons we just discussed. Now, when you look at your function, get rid of f of x. Just write y. It's the same thing. So y is equal to x plus 3. Some mathematicians might argue, but, you know, for your purposes, it's totally fine. Just think about them as interchangeable. Um, okay, so what I need to do now is if I know for my x-intercept, excuse me, my y-intercept, that x will always equal 0, then what I can do is plug 0 in everywhere in my function I see x, and then solve it for y. Whatever I get then for y will tell me the value of y when x is equal to 0. Okay? So y will equal now 0 plus 3 times 4 times 0 squared minus 1. So y will equal, this will be 3 in here, right? 0 squared is just 0. 0 times 4 is 0, so this is going to be 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 is simply going to be negative 1. And 3 times a negative 1 is going to be negative 3. So this is now the y-coordinate of your y-intercept. I'm going to write that on up here on the top right. So for the y-intercept now, we know it. We know the coordinates, and I'm going to write it in terms of coordinate form. We know that the x value of the y-intercept is always going to be 0, and now we know that the y-coordinate of the y-intercept is going to be negative 3. So we should expect this graph to cross the y-axis somewhere around negative 3, somewhere when y is negative 3. Okay, x has to be 0, y has to be negative 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same, same idea, right? Same thought process, but the algebra will wind up working out differently. So this is going to be the x-intercept now. So same thing. What do you know when you're dealing with your x-intercept? You know that y will equal now 0. Okay? Rewrite your function. y equals now x plus 3 times then 4x squared minus 1. Okay. So what do we do? Same thing. You got y is equal to 0 when you plug this in for y. 
and now you only have one unknown in your equation, your x's, you're basically then trying to figure out when y is zero, what the heck is x, okay? And that's how we, that, that's the thought process. Then what we need to do from there is algebra. We also need to do a little bit of thinking at the same time. But 4x squared minus 1. Okay, now, doesn't this look intimidating? Right? You're like, oh my god. It gives me nightmares at night, right? I, I agree. I agree. So it shouldn't, though. And the reason being is because it's actually not that bad. Let me just go through a little bit of a thought experiment, okay? You're saying, what, or what we're saying here with this equation, is that zero has to somehow equal this term. Let me call that A. And it's multiplied by now this term. Okay, let me call that B. Now just take a step back for a minute, okay? In order for this to be true, what must be a value for A? Or what can be a value for A? Well, couldn't A equal zero? Or shouldn't A equal zero at some point in time? If A is equal to zero, then does it matter what B is? Uh, no, right? It does not. Because whatever, if A is zero and B is 15 million, guess what? Zero times 15 million is still zero, right? So that would be true. When A is equal to zero, when this term is equal to zero, then I know that this whole multiplication will become zero, right? I mean, it's very simple. Con uh, on the same hand, the same thing works for the second term here, b, right? If b equals zero, I could care less what a is. Could be negative 1,402, right? It doesn't really make a difference because negative 1,402 times zero is, guess what? I don't know, zero, right? So what we're saying is that if this term could somehow equal zero, then this whole thing on the right-hand side will become zero. Now, armed with that knowledge and armed with that logic, what we can now begin to do is we can now set up math equations for ourselves to figure that out. I mean, what we were just saying is somehow if this thing equals zero, write that out. If x plus three equals zero somehow, then I know that this whole thing will go to zero. Right? On the same hand, I know then that if this term somehow equals 0, so you write it out, 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. If it equals 0 somehow, then I know that this whole thing will go to 0. Right Now, this is beautiful because now you set up two math equations. That's why you might notice this and you say, oh, now that's why we break it up into two things. I just know we break it up into two things, right? But that's why you do. So... Now, all you got to do is solve this for x. Okay, this turns out to be nice and simple. So when you solve this for x, you subtract 3 from both sides, and x will equal the negative 3. Okay? That turns out to be one of the x-intercepts now. So let's write that down over here. x-intercept. All right. We're going to have an x-coordinate of 3, uh, negative 3, excuse me. And remember, we always know what the y is. It's always going to be 0. Now, same thing we got to do on the right-hand right side. Add 1 to both sides. We get 4x squared is equal to 1. Divide out your 4 from both sides. So just to save a little space now, I'm going to write x squared should be equal to now 1 fourth, right? And all you have to do now at this particular point to get rid of the square is you got to take the square root of both sides. Now when you take the square root, uh, some say, well, you're only going to get the positive and negative. What we need to do in this problem is whenever you take the square root, you're going to get both a plus and negative value. Okay, what's going to happen is this. You're going to get x is equal to now a uh, negative, and you can do this in the calculator if you like, right? You can plug it in. It's going to equal plus or minus. I know I'm writing it over here, but this, remember, the math really goes down here. x will equal plus or minus one half, okay? What you can do here in the calculator is you can do that, right? Hit second square root if you like, and then just type one divided by four. Hit enter. See how it comes out to 0.5? Right now, the calculator is going to give you the positive answer. It's not going to tell you that it should be plus or minus. Okay, and some might argue that it should only be positive, but for our purposes here, I want to include both because technically speaking, right, if you were to take negative one half and you squared it, it would come out to be positive one fourth, which is what we said over here. All right, so I really have two values now for my x, and I'm going to write them as two separate coordinates. So now my x-intercept will be negative 1 half comma 0. 
and another one should be positive one half comma zero. So I basically have three x intercepts, or what could be three x intercepts, and one y intercept. Okay? Now, that's it basically. I mean, those are the answers, but if you wanted to check yourself by using the calculator, it's fine. Or if you wanted to just use the calculator at the start, that's also fine too if you're allowed. I don't know if you are or not. But what you can do is you plug it in, right? Parenthesis now, we're going to do x plus 3. Close the parenthesis, then open the parenthesis. It's going to be 4x squared uh, minus 1, okay? Close the parenthesis. Hit graph. All right, so I'm a little zoomed. Let me go to standard. So what I'm going to do is zoom. I'm going to do standard 6, and we'll start there. Okay, so there's the standard zoom, right? Now, let me see if I uh, probably zoom in too much. But if, actually, let me go to a custom window just to, so we're going to go x minimum uh, negative 10. We don't really need it. It's going to go, the most minimum value is going to be negative 3. So maybe what I'll do is I'll hit negative 5, okay? x max, the biggest value is going to be 1. I don't really, uh, excuse me, 1, uh, one half. So I'm just going to go out to 1, okay? And we'll have a scale of 1 there. The minimum y just go down to, uh, it's going to go, the most minimum value is going to be negative 3, so go down to negative 5. And the max value, who really cares, just go up to 5 or something. And we'll scale it by 1, that's fine. Now hit graph, okay? So here's now a nice zoomed in picture, all right? Each one of these tick marks represents 1. So if I go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, that's the x-intercept, this is the x-axis. So there it is, right? Boom. There it is. And actually, you know what I'll do here? Watch. Let's. I'm just going to put this over the page at the moment because we really don't care about the work. So watch. I'm going to start highlighting, okay? This coordinate right here, negative 3, 0, is right here. That's negative 3, 0. This coordinate right here of negative 1 half 0, that's right here. Do you see how it's in the middle? If this is 0 and this is negative 1, that's right in the middle. This coordinate right here, let's go to yellow is going to be this value right here, positive one half comma zero, right? And guess what? Last but not least, let's grab a different color. Last but not least, zero, negative three, the y-intercept is found here. Look at how beautiful that is, right? So we checked ourselves, and we know we're right. You can also, by the way, instead of using the graph, but you should get an idea, this is actually a cubic function, right? Um, if you wanted, you go to hit second table, and now what you should start to see is, well, you might actually have to step your table a little better. you got to go by half, so otherwise we're not going to find. So do tekken, a second, tekken, do tekken. Do um, a second uh, window, so that gives you to your table. Now you want to increment your table values by a half, so just do 0.5. All right, now hit second table. And now you can see clearly that the, uh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Wow. Why does that just pop into your head? Well, my head. Uh, when I, you're probably like, what in the world is he? I never even heard that before, right? Yes, I'm getting older. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, um, I get very distracted. It's very, t yeah. Okay, anyway, go to negative three for your x, right? When x is negative three, what should y be? Zero. That's what we said over here. When x is going to be negative a half, boom, what's y? Zero. That's what we said. When x is positive a half, what's going to be, what's y? Zero. Okay. Right? When x is zero, what's going to be y? Negative three. That's what we said. There's so many ways you can do this. All right? Um, but that's it. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning. I really do hope this helps. And if it did, please help us out. Like, subscribe. The best thing you do is definitely tell your friends or your classmates. All right? If we've helped you out at all, it'd be an awesome way to help us out. It's totally free to, to suggest us. And uh, we would love to help more people. Um, we really feel very honored we're able to help as many people as we are. And um, yeah, thank you so much for everything. Look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.